Welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Pastor Reed, and I am the pastor of St. George's United Methodist Church in St. George's, Delaware. And it is my distinct pleasure to welcome each and every one of you today to this Easter sunrise service. Here at St. George's, our whole purpose and desire is to love God and to love people. So as we come together, let us also keep in our hearts and our minds all those that are in the midst and on the front lines of battling against the effects of this coronavirus, COVID-19. Let us open with a word of prayer and pray as our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ told us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And before we begin, I'd like to give a couple of announcements, at least three announcements anyway. Um, one, on Wednesday, April the 15th, at 6.30 p.m., we'll be having our second game night on Zoom. My second announcement is that we are still taking donations for our community food pantry and library. And third, continue to send your joys and concerns to office at St. George's UMC.com. Now will you join with me as we affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. from John, John 20th chapter 1 through 18, and it reads as follows. 
Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Since the Sabbath ends at sundown on Saturday, the earliest Mary could visit Jesus' tomb was on the first day of the week, Sunday. The Gospel of John tells us at that time it was still dark. However, this gospel writer used the words dark and darkness several times, usually to speak of spiritual darkness. Whether John is referring to physical or spiritual darkness is not clear. Yet what is clear is that Mary's world was very dark. Jesus had been crucified and she was a witness to it. The Gospel of John does not tell us the purpose of Mary's visit. Given that Mary expected the tomb to be closed, it would seem that she has come only to grieve and to pay her respects. But upon her arrival, she discovers that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So Mary ran to Simon Peter and the beloved disciple to share the news that they had taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. The presence of the two male disciples at the tomb is important because it establishes two legal witnesses to the empty tomb. In those days, as a woman, Mary had no legal standing to testify as a witness. So, 
The text tells us that Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. They run together, but then the beloved disciple outruns Peter and arrives at the tomb first. Then he bent over and looked inside. To his surprise, he saw the strips of linen lying there, but he did not go inside. Yet he is an important witness to the resurrection of Jesus. Simon Peter arrives shortly after John. Unlike John, Peter goes directly into the tomb. It is at this point that Peter notices the grave's clothes. In this story, the grave clothes serve three functions. First, they provide visual evidence of Jesus' resurrection. Second, they provide evidence that Jesus' body was not stolen. Grave robbers would not leave valuable linen cloth behind. Third, they provided evidence that Jesus rose with all power in his hands. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus emerged from the tomb, still wrapped in his grave clothes. Jesus had to command bystanders to free him. However, when Jesus emerged from the tomb, he did so without the help of anyone. After Simon Peter entered, the other disciples did the same. And according to the text, he saw and believed. It seems that the sight of the grave clothes and the empty tomb must have somehow awakened the faith of the beloved disciple. It is very possible that in telling the story of Jesus' resurrection, that John is also telling his own personal story of faith. In any event, the beloved disciple sees and believes. In the very next verse, it says that the disciples went back to where they were staying, which leads me to believe that they were uncertain about what they should do next. Meanwhile, Mary stood outside the tomb crying, but when she decided to look inside, she saw two angels dressed in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Neither Peter nor the beloved disciples saw the angels. Nevertheless, the angels asked Mary why she was crying, and she explained through her tears that they had taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they had put him. Mary is struggling to understand all that has taken place. And it is at this point that Jesus comes to Mary. Unfortunately, Mary fails to recognize him. Perhaps her vision is clouded by her tears. Perhaps her grief so great is so great that she can't think clearly. Or perhaps Jesus' body has been transformed in the resurrection and she is unable to recognize him immediately. Nonetheless, Jesus asked her the same question that the angels asked. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Mary, thinking he was the gardener, seeks to learn where she might find Jesus' body. How she would carry the body from one place to another is not in the text. However, she appears to believe that Jesus' body has been dishonored and she is determined to see that he received the honor that he deserves. To Mary's surprise, Jesus addresses her by name. Hearing her name and Jesus' voice, Mary recognizes him and addresses him, Rabboni, which means teacher. This incident should remind us all that Jesus calls his sheep by name and his sheep know his voice, a stranger's voice. They will not follow. In verse 17, it says that do not hold on to me 
For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Verse 17 has generated a great deal of scholarly conversation. Why does Jesus prohibit Mary from touching him, but later invites Thomas to do so? Scholars differ on these matters, but most believe that Mary has thrown herself at Jesus' feet and is clinging to him in her great joy. Jesus commands her not to cling to him because he is ascending to the Father. He cannot allow himself to be encumbered by her grasping arms, and she cannot keep him from continuing his earthly and heavenly work. Mary is not to interrupt this glorification process by clinging to Jesus. Rather than clinging to Jesus, Mary is to go to his brothers, his disciples. He and his disciples are brothers by virtue of the fact that they share a common father, my father and your father, my God and your God. This is the first time in this gospel that Jesus has referred to them as his brothers. Elsewhere, Jesus said, whoever does the will of my father is in heaven, is my brother and sister and mother. Now, following his resurrection, he acknowledges that these disciples are his brothers and sisters. So Mary obeys the Lord by going to the disciples and announcing that she had seen the Lord. And by telling them all that he had said to her. So now, the question becomes, who will you tell about your encounter with Jesus? Who will you tell that you have seen the Lord? Church family, make it your business today to tell your story about how you met Jesus. How Jesus has made a difference in your life. If Jesus has not made a difference in your life, he is inviting you now to come into a right relationship with him. The Bible tells us, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whoever shall let me in and I shall come in and sup with them and they with me. Invite him into your life today. He is risen. He is risen indeed. So be it. Amen.
Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, may our power and dominion be thine.